introduction. I'm Yan Liu from uh, Professor Li Hongwang's group. Currently, our lab has moved to Caltech. Today, I'll be talking about focusing light inside dynamic scattering media with millisecond digital optical phase conjugation. First, let me explain why it is highly desired to focus light inside scattering media. Optical focusing is critical to many applications, such as optical imaging, laser cutting, laser surgery, phototherapy, and optical manipulation, such as optical tweezing and optogenetics. However, light scattering prevents optical focusing beyond one millimeter deep inside biological tissue, which limits all these applications to shallow depths. So it is highly desired to break this optical diffusion limit and focus light deep inside scattering media. To do this, our lab and others developed time-reversed ultrasonic encoded optical focusing, or true focusing, to focus light deep inside scattering media. Now let me explain the principle of true focusing. Compared with light, ultrasound is much less scattered in tissue due to its long wavelengths. So we first focus ultrasound to a small volume deep inside the scattered medium. Then we illuminate a laser beam. Of course, light will be scattered by all these heterogeneities, but a portion of light passing through the ultrasound focus will change its frequency due to the momentum transferred from the ultrasound. These frequency shifted photons shown in red come from the ultrasound focus, and they are called ultrasound tagged photons. Imagine if we can detect only these ultrasound tagged photons and do a time reversal, these photons will trace their trajectory back to the ultrasound focus where they come from. In this way, they form a focus despite scattering. However, in reality, we cannot reverse the time, but we can do something called optical phase conjugation using this phase conjugate mirror to achieve the equivalent time reversal. Here's more information about optical phase conjugation. This expression represents a wave traveling from left to right. Now, if we do a time reversal, we get a wave traveling from right to left. Now, if we do a phase conjugation by taking the conjugate of the phase, again, we get a wave traveling from right to left. As you can see, phase conjugation is equivalent to time reversal, which can be proved based on this equation. Here's a comparison between a regular mirror and a phase conjugate mirror that performs optical phase conjugation. A regular mirror would reflect a beam along this direction, while a phase conjugate mirror would reflect the beam back to where it comes from, as if time has been reversed. Using this phase conjugate mirror, we can achieve the equivalent time reversal so the ultrasound tagged photons can trace their trajectory back to the ultrasound focus to form an optical focus. One thing we should note is that biological tissue is not only a scatter medium, but also a dynamic scatter medium, where all these light scatterers keep moving due to physiological motions such as breathing, heartbeat, and blood flow. Red blood cells are the main fast-moving light scatterers. If photons are singly scattered by blood, the speckle correlation time, tau c, which quantifies how fast light pattern changes, can be estimated by lambda overflow speed, which is on the order of one millisecond. The speckle correlation time is even shorter if photons are multiply scattered by blood. So ideally, we should finish the true focusing procedure within one millisecond. However, previous implementations operate longer than 200 milliseconds, which is much longer than the one millisecond requirement for achieving true focusing in vivo. So there's a strong motivation to, de to develop high-speed true focusing systems. To do this, we need to first understand how to build a phase conjugate mirror. In other words, how to achieve optical phase conjugation in reality. There are two approaches. In the analog approach, we use a reference beam tuned to the same frequency as that of the ultrasound tag light. They interfere and write a hologram inside a photorefractive crystal. Then we use another reference beam to illuminate the crystal, and the diffracted light would be phase conjugate to the ultrasound tag light, so the diffracted light can converge to the ultrasound focus to create an optical focus. This method can be fast, as demonstrated in our previous paper. However, the energy gain is much less than one, meaning the time reversed light is much weaker compared with the original ultrasound tag light. To achieve a higher energy gain, we switch to a digital approach. This approach achieves optical phase conjugation by following its definition. First, we measure the phase of ultrasound tag light. Then, we display the conjugate phase on a spatial modulator that can modulate the phase of light. Upon reflection, this planar reference beam acquires this phase and becomes phase conjugate to the ultrasound tag light. So the reflected light can converge to the ultrasound focus to create an optical focus. As you can see, this digital optical phase conjugation approach involves two steps. One is waveform measurement, the other is waveform modulation. Here's a comparison of different spatial modulators used for waveform modulation. Most people use pneumatic liquid crystals based spatial modulator. However, they're slow. It takes tens of milliseconds to modulate the phase, which is much longer than the one millisecond requirement for achieving true focusing in vivo. 
digital micro mirror devices can be faster. However, they normally achieve binary amplitude modulation, which results in a low focusing efficiency and quality. We quantify the focusing quality by peak to background ratio, which is the intensity ratio between the focus and the background. In this work, we use ferroelectric liquid crystals as a fast spatial modulator. These molecules can respond to external electric field very fast because of their spontaneous polarizations. The spatial line modulator has the shortest runtime of one millisecond, including the data transfer time. However, unlike pneumatic liquid crystals that can modulate the phase from zero to two pi with 256 phase levels, ferroelectric liquid crystals can modulate the phase of light only to zero or pi. Fortunately, we can prove that this binary phase modulation scheme only reduced the focusing quality by around half. However, we gain at least 10 times in speed. Here's an illustration of different waveform modulation schemes using the three types of devices I just talked about. We can think the incident light is composed of different beamlets, and each beamlet arrives at the target location with a different path length and phase. The electric field of each beamlet at this point can be represented by a phaser, and the net electric field at this target location is a summation of, of all the phasers. Because of scattering, this is a random phaser sum. That's why we see a speckle pattern. However, if we can shape the wavefront of the incident light by a spatial modulator, we can achieve a focus here at this target location. Specifically, with, with full phase modulation achieved by pneumatic liquid crystals, we can rotate each phaser to make them aligned to maximize the electric field amplitude. In this way, we can achieve a focus. With binary phase modulation achieved by ferroelectric liquid crystals, we can rotate each phaser to zero or 180 degree. So for these phasers that destructively interfere with the pre preceding phaser, we just rotate it 180 degree to make them constructively interfere. Same for this one. We rotate it 180 degree to make them constructively interfere. Again, we can increase the electric field amplitude and achieve a focus. With binary amplitude modulation achieved by DMDs, we can turn on or turn off each phaser so for those bad phasers that destructively interfere with the rest of the phasers, we just turn it off, turn them off. Again, we can increase the electric field amplitude and achieve a focus. After knowing what binary phase modulation is, let's take a look at how we achieve it by a ferroelectric liquid crystal-based specialized modulator. This is one pixel of the SOM. While ferroelectric liquid crystal, crystal layer acts as a quarter wave plate, after this round trip light propagation, the SOM pixel acts as a halfway plate, and there are 512 by 512 pixels in total. The optic axis of the halfway plate can be electric electrically switched between two states. This is one state, and this is the other state. To achieve binary phase modulation, the polarization direction of the incident light bisect the two states of the optical axis. To achieve binary phase modulation, after reflection of this uh, SOM, which acts as a halfway plate, the incident light field is rotated to either this direction or this direction, depending on which state this pixel is in. After passing through a polarizer, the output electric field is either along left or right with the same amplitude. In this way, we achieve binary phase modulation by this spatial modulator. Here shows some test results of fast binary phase modulation achieved by this ferroelectric liquid crystal-based spatial modulator. On the computer side, we transmit two patterns alternatingly every one millisecond to the SOM, and we monitor the interference pattern between the SOM encoded beam and the planar reference beam. In this way, we can observe the phase modulation. Here is the uh, inter interference pattern as a function of time. We can see pattern one and the inverse of pattern one, and pattern two and inverse of the pattern two. The inverse pattern is because the SOM, the SOM need to invert the voltage to balance the charge. As you can see from pattern one to pattern two, it takes only one millisecond, including the data transfer time. So with this SOM, we can finish this waveform modulation part within one millisecond. Now, the speed bottleneck of this digital, waveform, digital optical phase conjugation approach is the low speed of waveform measurement. Previously, we have used a locking camera to improve the speed and bit efficiency of digital optical phase conjugation and true focusing. However, since this camera uses a USB 2 interface, uh, the data transfer takes tens of milliseconds, which is too long. To achieve fast the digital optical phase conjugation, we have to use those cameras with camera link interface that can, that can transfer data much faster. With those cameras, people have been using phase shifting holography to measure the wavefront, which takes at least 10 milliseconds because of the need to record four images. 
We want to do faster than that. We noticed that the, the ferro electric spatial modulator we use can do only binary phase modulation. So we don't need to measure the phase very accurately using traditional phase shifting holography. As long as we can de determine whether the phase is more close to zero or pi, that's enough. So this provides an opportunity to speed up the waveform measurement by reducing the number of holograms to be recorded. Specifically, for focusing light through scatter medium, we use the method developed by Professor Chang Huiyang's group. Basically, we measure the in, uh, interference pattern between the sample beam and, and the reference beam. We can make the reference beam much stronger than the sample beam, and this equation can be written as this. By comparing the measured intensity with the reference beam intensity, we can ob obtain the binary wavefront of the sample light. Specifically, if the measured intensity is greater than the reference beam intensity, we know this cosine term is positive, so the phase difference is between minus half pi to half pi, and we can assign it to zero. If the measured intensity is smaller than the reference beam intensity, we know the cosine term is negative, so the phase difference is between half pi to three times half pi, and we can assign it to pi. With this method, we only need to record one frame as opposed to four frames used in previous methods. This method is good, however, it does not work when we want to focus light inside scatter medium with true focusing. Because in true focusing, we have this large amount of photons that is not tagged by the ultrasound. And this term is much stronger than the, in, than the interference term. So in our paper, we develop a double exposure scheme. Basically, we record two frames. While in the second frame, we shift the ultrasound tag light by the base of the ultrasound tag light by pi. This equation can be written as this. If we compare equation one and equation two, all these corresponding terms are the same except this sign here. By comparing I versus with I2, we can obtain the binary wavefront of the ultrasound tag light. Specifically, if I is greater than I2, we know this cosine term is positive, so the phase difference is between minus half pi to half pi, and we can assign it to zero. If I is smaller than I2, we know this cosine term is negative, and the phase difference is between half pi to three times half pi, and we can assign it to pi. Using this method, we only need to record two frames as opposed to four frames. Here shows a workflow of our fast digital true focusing system. As you can see, we record two frames. Well, in each frame takes, takes around three milliseconds. In the second frame, the ultrasound phase was shifted by pi. Our calculation takes less than zero, uh, half a millisecond. Then we transfer the phase and display the phase. The total system runtime is 7.7 .7 milliseconds for 0 0.3 million degrees of freedom. Since we, we use rolling shutter of the camera, we can define an effective system latency, which is the time from the average camera exposure time till the playback of the wavefront. In this case, it's 6.5 millisecond. Our system is one to two orders of magnitude faster than previous digital true focusing system. In fact, our system is the fastest of all the digital wavefront shaping techniques developed to date to focus light inside highly scattered media. Let me show you some results. Here, we focus light through three millimeter thick chicken tissue. We move the chicken tissue at different speeds to control the speckle correlation time observed on the face conjugate mirror. These images show the focus we achieved at different speckle correlation times. As you can see, even when the speckle correlation time is two milliseconds, we can still observe a focus. As a control, without doing wavefront shaping, we cannot see a focus. In each image, we can compute the peak to background ratio of the focus and plot it here as a function of speckle correlation time. By fitting the experimental data to a theoretical model, we can obtain this time constant B, which is the time, the speckle correlation time, when the peak to background ratio reduces to one over E squared of the peak to background ratio achieved when the sample is static. We can define an actual system latency by this time constant B, which is three millisecond in our case. This is for focusing light through scatter media. We also focus light inside the scatter medium comprising two slices of chicken tissue so if true, true focusing works, the atom encoded beam should converge here to form a focus. We use a beam splitter to create a copy of this focus so we can measure it with a camera outside the water tank. These images show the focus we achieved at different speckle correlation times. As you can see, even when the speckle correlation time is four milliseconds, we can still observe some focus. As a control, without using true focusing, we cannot see a focus. Again, we can uh, plot the peak to background ratio as a function of speckle correlation time. By fitting the experimental data to a theoretical model, we can obtain this time constant B, which is our actual system latency. In this case, it's six milliseconds. 
I just talk about how we improve the speed of digital optical phase conjugation and true focusing using a ferroelectric liquid crystal based spatial modulator and binary waveform measurement. Now let me talk about how we improve the focusing quality by full polarization and optical phase conjugation. Suppose we use a horizontally polarized light to illuminate a scatter medium. Due to scattering, the polarization of the, uh, the, light, uh, the, the polarization of the light coming out of the sample can have all kinds of polarizations. However, previous digital optical phase conjugation systems only measure and phase conjugate the horizontal component of the scatter light, which is limited by the principle of spatial modulators. This is not ideal because we lose information. Given that an arbitrary polarization can be decomposed into two orthogonal polarizations, we can use, we use two spatial modulators to phase conjugate light with horizontal and vertical polarization, thus achieving full polarization optical phase conjugation. Here shows the focus we achieved through four millimeter thick chicken tissue with either single or full polarization digital optical phase conjugation. As you can see, the focus is brighter with full polarization optical phase conjugation. Here shows a close up of the regions denoted by the boxes in the first row. We can see among all the three foci, the focus achieved by full polarization digital optical phase conjugation has a nearly circular shape that more closely resembles the shape of the input focus. So we actually improve the phase conjugation fidelity by this method because we use more information of the scatter light. Here's a summary of today's talk. We use a ferroelectric liquid crystal based spatial modulator to reduce the waveform modulation time in waveform shaping to one millisecond. We develop a binary waveform measurement method for true focusing, which doubles the speed and works well with ferroelectric spatial modulators that perform binary phase modulation. We focus light through three, three millimeter thick chick, moving chicken tissue with a system latency of three milliseconds. Using true focusing, we focus light inside the dynamic, inside the scatter medium comprising moving chicken tissue with a system latency of six milliseconds. Our system achieves the fastest light focusing inside the scatter medium among all the digital waveform shaping methods developed to date. In addition, we develop a full polarization digital optical phase conjugation system that doubles the peak to background ratio and improves the phase conjugation fidelity. We would like to thank our colleagues in Wang Lab and funding to our lab. For more details, please check out, check out our papers. Thank you for your attention.